many kinds of goal. Free kicks, aiders for Brazil against Argentina in 1982. Against Romania, Pele. Some of the most exciting goals are created by runs down the wing and the tormenting center. Armstrong to Hamilton. He crosses. The keeper parries. Armstrong hammers home. The incomparable Cruyff against Argentina in a thunderstorm in 1974 to Johnny Red. The searing solo power of Bobby Charlton against Mexico. Or the speculative flyer by fullback Neri for Scotland against Brazil. Best are the goals created by spontaneous perception, by Maradona's marvelous telepathic pass to Burukaga. The pass which wins the 1986 final. Or the only goal by Brazil against England in the 1970 first round. Created by the sublime instinctive vision of Pele's measured, unhurried pass under pressure to Gersinho. For Star, the little chess player to Rivellino against Peru. The maestro Laudrup of Denmark for Elkia against Uruguay. From the wing again, the perplexing Barnes to Lineker in vain against Argentina. There are a handful of truly great players such as Pele and Cruyff. Eusebio of Portugal from Mozambique was unquestionably a great goal scorer. Most memorably in 1966, he initiates the destruction of champions Brazil. A graceful athlete of phenomenal power who unmercifully punishes the hesitant. In the quarter-final, when North Korea extraordinarily lead by three goals, his ability to hammer the weak is especially needed. Eusebio changes gear and runs through the opposition. He scores four, including two penalties. Semi-final against England is another matter. There is Charlton and Styles. The gritty little England marker has the measure of Eusebio. He forces him out onto the fringes of the game and the great goal scorer is stifled. Another marked man in 66 is Pele. Bulgaria is soon kicking him. But he exacts revenge. Without Pele injured, fragile Brazil are overwhelmed by brilliant Hungary and a stunning goal by Farkas. Pele returns against Portugal only to be hacked out of the tournament, together with his team. The greatest player of his era will have to wait another four years to restore his international reputation. Football is the loser. 
World Cup expediency now produces a foul every three minutes. Flair, Bobby Charlton, England struggle in the early matches. Until he liberates them with a glorious explosive long-range drive against Mexico. Two goals by Charlton put paid to Portugal in the semi-final. The second, another spectacular blast. Jeff Hurst to Charlton to put England in the final. Dejected Eusebio weeps. Ratin, the captain of Argentina, had been sent off in the controversial quarter final with England. by West German referee Kreitlein, who said it was for the look in his eye. Argentina corrupt their sumptuous skills with repetitive fouling. Ramsey, England's manager, calls them animals. and it needs a tactically innovative goal between Martin Peters and Jeff Hurst across to the near post perfected at West Ham to steal a place in the semi-final. And with Greaves injured, Hurst ensures his place. Elsewhere, a youngster named Beckenbauer has been making his mark. And in an over-tough semi-final with Russia, he scores a fine second goal. In the final, Charlton and Beckenbauer are tactically opposed in midfield. Frustratingly, they neutralize each other's goal-scoring talents. A soft early goal given away uncharacteristically by Wilson sees Haller take the lead. England, however, call the tune. Charlton, though shadowed relentlessly by Beckenbauer, dictates the pattern and a free kick to Bobby Moore brings an equaliser. Hurst, preferred by Ramsey to a now fit Greaves, is again the master with his head. Tilkovsky can do no more than watch. England go ahead, again through the West Ham partnership. This time, Hurst's shot is deflected and Peters swoops. England are only minutes away from victory when Jack Charlton is judged to a foul. Styles, the passionate soul of the home team, argues frenziedly, drags together the defensive wall. Emmerich shoots, Styles winces. Cohen blocks. Held shoots again. The ball is deflected. Weber lunges. Extra time.
Can Ramsey raise his team's morale? Alan Ball soon demonstrates his unquenchable spirit. Charlton hits a post. Ball racing clear centers. Hurst swivels and shoots against the bar. The ball bounces on the line. Is it a goal? The Swiss referee consults his Russian linesman. Yes. Thankfully, to eliminate doubt, only seconds from time, Hurst blasts the first ever World Cup final hat trick. Four years later in Mexico, Beckenbauer is still stalking England. In the quarter-final, England lead 2-0 when Beckenbauer strikes 12 minutes from time. Sailor having equalised, England sink in extra time. Grabowski crosses. Law heads square and Muller volleys as Bonetti stands frozen in goal. Muller from Bayern Munich is heir to Eusebio as the European goal scorer supreme. Short, powerful, fast, his low centre of gravity enables him to score from seemingly impossible angles. Positionally astute, he scored more than a goal a game in his career and did little else. Seven in the first round. Against Morocco, three against Bulgaria, and three against Peru. Ten goals in the tournament, one more than Eusebio in England. Italy, twice winners pre-war, had ignominiously lost in 1966 to North Korea to the only goal by Pak Do Ip. Now in Mexico they hope for better things, especially from Riva, their lethal-footed winger. In a quarter-final with the hosts, Dominguini gives them a soft opening goal. And two more by Riva put them in the semi-final. The semi-final against West Germany goes to extra time. Muller, sneaking in when undetected by the Italian defence, forces Germany ahead 2-1. Beckenbauer is playing on with a dislocated collarbone. Bergnich, with a half chance, draws it to the level. Altitude, heat and fatigue are overpowering the players. But Riva, with the best goal of the match, gives Italy the lead 3-2. A free kick to Germany. Sailor forces a corner. The ball comes over. Sailor heads square. The ubiquitous Muller makes it 3-3. Finally, Riva centers from the left. Rivera sweeps the ball home, and Italy are in the final for the first time in 32 years. Brazil, reborn from the disasters of 1966, have a new volatile team, including left winger Rivellino, whose free kicks are a speciality, here against Czechoslovakia. Gesinho, on the other flank, has taken on the mantle of Garincha and scores goals almost as freely, with two in the 4-1 defeat of the Czechs. 
The fascination of the first round is England, the holders, against Brazil, in one of the best matches ever seen. England, with a team even more coherent than in 1966, play a possession football which Brazil fear. The economy, accuracy and defensive assurance of England, the subtlety and sleight of foot of Brazil. Tostao combines with Paolo Cesar early in the second half to elude three England defenders. Then spins through 180 degrees to curl the ball across the penalty area to Pele. A touch, Banks is no more than a lace curtain in the path of Jezinho's bullet. Peru are crushed in the quarter-final First by Rivellino from Tostao, then by Tostao from Rivellino. Uruguay offer little more resistance in the semi-final. Pele and Tostao open the path for Jairzinho. Then Pele sets it up for Rivellino to smash the third in a 3-1 victory. From Pele, a glimpse of his unparalleled inspiration. With Chaplin-esque deception, he makes a fool of Uruguay's goalkeeper and nearly scores. In the first round, he scored against Czechoslovakia. Against Romania, he scores two. A ferocious free kick. And then a mugger's snap. final performance against Italy will epitomize this unique player's poetic skill. Italy and Riva may have plans, but Pele sends them spinning. With this peerless header after 19 minutes, Brazil's 100th goal in World Cup history. A defensive blunder gives Boninsegna an unopposed equaliser. Italy have no answer to Pele. This time he's inches wide. Gerson, with a savage shot from 20 yards, restores the lead. Albertozzi is forlorn. Brazil are in a different class. Though there's nothing special about their third, Jairzinho is the first ever to score in every match of the finals. Fortunate Italy are on the ropes awaiting the knockout. And Pele supplies it with his studied pass into the path of his captain, Carlos Alberto. Brazil have won the World Cup a third time, setting new standards. Pele's name will live on in football forever. From the sunshine of Mexico to a downpour in Frankfurt four years later, where Poland need to win their last second round match with West Germany to reach the final. Poland, 
who eliminated England in the qualifying tournament, are dazzling the German crowds, but fail on the waterlogged pitch. With a quarter of an hour to go, Bonhoff slides his pass right. And there is the ubiquitous Muller, the threat is shot for the only goal. Germany are in the final. They began uncertainly. It needs a rocket of a long-range shot from Breitner in midfield to topple Chile. Overath scores the first and best of three against Australia. But in the first ever meeting with neighbours East Germany, it is Sparwasser, 12 minutes from time, who sends shudders through the host nation. Meyer doubts Germany's future. The second round is not wholly convincing for Germany either. Edstrom of Sweden scores first with a glorious volley. Overath snatches an equaliser. And soon Bonhoff luckily makes it 2-1. Now Helmut Schoen, Germany's manager, makes a late tactical substitution. Grabowski, his fresh winger, scores a dramatic goal and Germany win 4-2 in the rain. Schoen knows it's not plain sailing. The Kingfishers catching the sunlight are Holland, led by the inimitable Cruyff. Within seven minutes of the opening match, Rep has headed them in front. And late in the match, he scores again. Holland have set the tempo, and Cruyff is the conductor. They continue their path of destruction against Bulgaria. Rep lashes their third. And from Cruyff's tantalizing cross, De Jong, a midfielder, dives to head a memorable fourth. Who can stop them? Not Argentina. Cruyff symbolizes Holland's artistic style. Within 11 minutes, he almost walks through the defense to score the first. He is the complete player, Europe's equivalent of Pele, as he demonstrates when creating the third for Rev. There are two thunderstorms on the night. Argentina lose 4-0. Onwards, Holland march. Only Brazil stands between them and the final. But it is a strange, uncommon Brazil, soured with ruthless intimidation. The Dutch reply is a razor-sharp shot by Nieskens from Cruyff's pass. And after more ugliness... Cruyff moves like a lynx to inflict another legitimate wound. To Munich, Holland come to confront the hosts. Their football, the most intuitive, the most harmonious since the Hungarians 20 years before.
Will they now forget their lines, the way the embarrassed groundsmen have forgotten their corner flags? Holland kick off. Two passes. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Now Cruyff receives the ball. Ghosts passed his marker votes and is felled. Jack Taylor awards a penalty after barely a minute's play. Dutch wives are near hysterical. Can the dream of crushing the Germans on their own soil be about to happen? Mrs. Van Hannigan cannot bear to watch. Nieskens beats Meyer from the spot, and the Dutch are free to let their spirits and their football soar. There is a dangerous intoxication in knowing unmistakably that you possess an ability which is superior to that of all others. Rudy Kroll, their left back, said, you can score too quickly. You start thinking about the result instead of the match. We thought we were world champions. We woke up too late. Will Argentina, the hosts in 1978, also be successful? They have the emotion and skill, but are they consistent? Italy in the first round are a threat, a team freed from habitual caution by manager Enzo Berzot. A throw from Bonetti. Antonioni to Bettega. A deflected wall pass from Rossi. And Bettega slides between two defenders to beat Fior. A brilliant goal, the only goal. Argentina have the advantage of earlier victories over Hungary and France. Luque scrambles the first against Hungary. And Batoni the second. Kempers hammers a ferocious shot against the French post. But after conceding an unjust first-half penalty, France are not overawed. Full-back Battiston attacks. Rocheteau hits the crossbar, and Platini smacks in the rebound. Only for Luque to score the winner with this spectacular drive against substitute goalkeeper Boratelli. Poor France. The most accomplished team seen at this stage are eliminated after two matches. Holland begins the second round against Austria. France heads them in front. Rep scores a second. And third. Even without Cruyff, Holland's touch remains devastating. West Germany, the holders, are confronted again. With a vengeance, Harry Hahn scores one of the best goals of all time in a 2-2 draw.
and repeats it for the winner in their closing second round match against Italy. Holland are in the final again. Brazil make easy meet of Peru in the second round. Dersou strikes his free kick over the wall to perfection. then squeezes his second in the 3-0 victory just inside the post. To surpass Brazil on goal difference and reach the final, Argentina have to beat Peru 4-0 or 5-1. Kempes sets them en route with a spectacular first. There is talk of a sellout, though Peru play with resolute spirit. Kempes second makes it 3-0. Luque knocks in the fourth. And the sixth. Once more, the Buenos Aires streets are jammed by millions in celebration. Scenes of unprecedented emotion greet the final, which Holland are expected to win. Their total football remains the most comprehensively effective teamwork in the world. Will it, at the second attempt, succeed? Holland tackle aggressively, but the first goal after half an hour comes from the explosive Kempis, the tournament's leading scorer. Speed and opportunism are too sharp for Holland's defence. Holland answer. In the course of the match, they create twice the chances Argentina do, but too often miss them. Yet from René van der Kerkhoff's cross, Naninga heads the equaliser. <laughs> Ref, having squandered the best chance of all, the game goes to extra time. And the irresistible Kempis once more puts Argentina in front. And following another run by Kempis, Bertoni seals Holland's fate. An undoubted triumph for manager Cesar Menotti, who has transformed his country's team. Argentina come to Spain in 1982 to defend their title. Menotti now possesses the world's most expensive player, Diego Maradona, whom as a teenager he had shrewdly kept out of the 1978 side. The hatchet men of world football are waiting to destroy Maradona. The cynicism of Belgium's defence typifies the treatment Maradona will constantly encounter, though Italy's is probably the most blatant. Violence has become the name of the game personified by no one more than Schumacher, West Germany's goalkeeper. His arrogance is apparent in this clash with Cis of France in the semi-final. Now he commits the foul of the century, totally ignoring the ball to crush Battiston. Battiston has three cracked vertebrae, yet there is no penalty. Schumacher, 
indifferent to his crime, stays on the field, and France must prematurely use their second substitute. It seems initially that justice will be done. Early in extra time, Trezor, France's aging libero, volleys brilliantly, 2-1. Elation leaps for the followers of France's gifted, graceful team when little Gires drives the ball past the wretched Schumacher, 3-1. Germany, historically so competitive, are not yet finished. Many times they have come from behind. Rummenegger, having come on as substitute, reduces the lead. and Fischer's overhead shot forces a penalty shootout, which Germany win. The Scots have a touching conviction that whatever the match, today will be their day. Conviction takes root when fullback Neri scores a blinder against fancied Brazil. The euphoria survives for 15 minutes. Then Zico, with his needle-like free kick, leaves Ruff feeling he's in the wrong job. Ada, with a devilish chip over Ruff, has them dancing in the Seville streets. This Ada is a little special. Argentina form a war. And Ada swerves his free kick over the top and in off the bar, with arguable assistance from Zico. Serginho heads with rare accuracy, and Argentina's cup has gone. Brazil are the toast of Spain. But Italy, anonymous survivors of the first round, have other ideas. Rossi, his recent bribery sentence lifted, heads Italy in front. Brazil need only to draw to reach the semi-final. Socrates saucily puts his shot through Zoff's legs. Brazilian confidence is jolted again when opportunist Rossi grabs his second. Brazil respond with an extravaganza of attacks. Shots flail upon Zoff. Falcao's drive puts them level. The joy of Brazil's football is that it knows only spontaneity and attack, and now perishes because of it, when Rossi is presented with his hat trick. Lato, Polish survivor from 1974, pitches the perfect cross for Boniek's first in a hat trick against Belgium. The renowned striker from Lotz stakes out a place in the semi-final.
Smolarek and Lato prize the gap for Boniek's third. Poland emotionally ensure a semi-final place with a draw against Russia. Can the Polish resurgence continue against the suddenly brash Italians, now forcing their critics to grovel? Rossi, the jack-in-a-box, makes sure Poland failed. In a lethargic match, Poland's inspiration is absent. Rossi's uncanny positional sense places him on the far post for a second goal. In two consecutive matches, his tally is five. an hour, the 1982 final against West Germany is a litany of fouls, obstruction and temper, provoking the referee's whistle and royal dissent. A goal by Rossi after 56 minutes brings sanity and presidential approval. Liberated from caution, Italy at last go out and play. Shirea, their libero and number seven, advances into attack and lays the ball into the path of Tardelli for a crushing second goal. Tardelli is more impressed than anyone. Conti, one of the match's few stars, creates a third for Altabelli. And Italy are champions a third time. The finals return in 1986 to Mexico, thanks to FIFA's indulgence. Russia, with eight players from Dynamo Kiev's exceptional club team, are powerful. Hungary don't know what's hit them, as Elenikov lashes Russia's second goal within the opening four minutes. Sad Hungary disintegrate. Russia galloped to a six-goal victory, the last from Rodionov. The rest of the World Cup opposition gasps. Next to feel the Russian heat are France. And with one of the best shots of the finals, Rats puts Russia ahead. France stay calm and draw 1-1. When in the quarter-final against Belgium, Belanov rasps the opening goal, Russia surely can't be checked. The illusion lasts barely an hour. Though Belanov scores again, Belgium stormed through 4-3 in extra time. Denmark are in their first ever World Cup finals. Elkia and Laudrup have stamped Denmark's class on the European Championship. Now Laudrup sends Elkia clear to begin the route of Uruguay. Soon Lerby and Elkia carve the opening for the second by Lerby. Uruguay, cynical and violent, have Bossio sent off. The ten men are laid bare by Denmark's flashing coordination. Laudrup dribbles through for the third. Elkia, almost as he pleases, 
slashes through the defense for the fifth. And to seal Uruguay's humiliation, Jesper Olsen stabs home the sixth. France, led by the gifted Platini, are expected to win their second round against despondent, listless Italy. And do. Italy, at the end of Enzo Biersot's reign, suffer their first defeat by France for 50 years. Tigana's run makes a decisive second goal for Stoppiera. cauldron of Guadalajara, the quarter-final between France and Brazil is one of the most gripping contests ever seen. The chess moves of thrust and counter-thrust are intense. And Careca strikes first for Brazil after 17 minutes. The elegance of Platini, Tigana and Gires contrasts with the improvisation of Brazil. Slowly, France take command. Gires and Rocheteau open the way. Platini casually strokes the equaliser, and after torrid, goalless extra time, France win on penalties. In 1982, Brian Robson scored the fastest goal in World Cup history against France but lack of goals retarded their advance. Will Lineker bring joy in 86? Following a near disastrous first round, England faced Paraguay. Lineker has rescued their hopes with a hat-trick against Poland and now he snatches the first against Paraguay. Paraguay, moderate opposition, are no match for England in this move. Gary Stevens creates the chance for Lineker to make it 3-0 and become the tournament's leading scorer so far with five goals. England must meet Argentina in the quarter-final. Argentina have not played Uruguay in the World Cup since the initial tournament in 1930, when Uruguay won. Now Maradona initiates the move which settles the score. He creates the winning goal for Pasculi. Maradona's game is emotionally highly strung. and it seems he has scored a legitimate goal in the second half. He realizes the referee has disallowed it. Team manager Bilardo is speechless. Maradona believes he has been cheated again. is on his side in the quarter-final against England. The sporting world is aghast. If the referee didn't see it, there's no future in England moaning. Four minutes later, there can be no protest when Maradona scores a goal of breathtaking genius. Taking on and leaving stranded five defenders, he flicks the greatest of goals. In 
In a few fleeting seconds, the World Cup witnesses the darting, muscular, uncontainable quality which makes the outstanding player of a generation. Belgium experienced the same anaesthetizing sensation in the semi-final. The demonic little man runs through the defensive ranks and none can halt him. Maradona and Argentina are set for triumph against West Germany. But Germany have proved before that predictions can fail. No one remembers better than manager Beckenbauer, their captain 12 years ago. Against Holland in 1974, Germany shrug aside adversity. Breitner, from the penalty spot, equalizes Holland's only goal. The Dutch fantasy dissolves before their own eyes. The Germans seize their chance. Bonhoeff breaks free on the right. The remarkable Muller twists to hook a shot from behind him, and Germany, not Holland, have won the World Cup. No one is quite sure how Germany, led by Rummenigge, have gone so far in 86. In the semi-final, the French were exhausted after the classic against Brazil and crumpled. Can the Germans confound the form? by Burushaga after 23 minutes curls into the penalty area and centre-half Brown leaps to head past a hesitant Schumacher. The passes of Maradona and Enrique cut open Germany's right flank. And Voldano tellingly exploits Schumacher's clumsy challenge. Argentina feel their hands on the cup. Phlegmatic Beckenbauer exhorts from the bench. A corner, confusion in the Argentina goal mouth. Rummenigge lunges to narrow the lead. Argentina's nerve, with Brown injured, seems to falter. Eight minutes remaining when Germany equalized. Berthold heads downwards from a corner. And Voller steers the ball between Pumpido's arms. The match is level. In the face of such a stinging setback, Argentina's response takes only three minutes. Maradona's peerless pass sends Burushaga free. And he strikes the ball beneath the hapless Schumacher. There are five minutes of the final remaining. Maradona hasn't scored. Yet, like Pelé before him, he has inspired victory. He has opened the way for the winning goal when Germany were ascendant. He has scored the greatest goal of these finals, the second against England in the quarter-final. His genius will be remembered in the years to come, as will the hand of God.